Hi everyone, Chris from Stone Age Gamer here, and welcome back to Stone Age Gaming, the show where I get to talk about the wonderful world of collecting video games. Now I want to talk to you about this today. This is a little project that I've been working on. Uh, it's a shadow box that's containing some mild Famicom games. Now, I use, I work for Stone Age Gamer, so obviously I'm familiar with uh, flashcards. I like using flashcards if I'm going to go back and play NES games, Super NES games, or even Famicom games, I typically do it through a flashcard instead of grabbing the old cartridges off my shelf. Now, that doesn't mean I don't still like collecting this stuff, because I do. Every single one of these games has some sort of meaning to me. It's why I have them. And the packaging, the instruction manuals, the cartridges themselves, that stuff is what's super interesting to me as far as collecting goes. Now, one of the things I like to do with Japanese games, I'm more, you know, I grew up here in North America, so Japanese games don't mean a ton to me, but I like to try and track down ones that have real historical significance to me. So, um, I went on a bit of a, a trip lately to find, like, the original Super Mario Brothers, the Famicom Disk System, Legend of Zelda, Kid Icarus, Metroid, that kind of stuff, uh, and I've always wanted a good way to display them, and it occurred to me that shadow boxes might be a pretty cool way to do it. So, I worked on this project, um, I'm recording this after I have already done the other ones, so, uh, let's go take a look at the video footage of me trying to piece together and figure out how to make a shadow box work for Famicom Disk System games. Enjoy! All right, so here we have a shadow box. I picked this up at Michael's, it came in a two pack. They're, they're very nice. Um, and the goal is to get these fellas, these Famicom Disk System games sitting inside nicely and pretty in this uh, shadow box uh, without them falling down or without doing any damage to these things. So we're not gonna use any tape or anything like that to hold these things in place. We're just gonna use a couple of thumbtacks, maybe some nails, just something to hold them in position so that they don't, uh, you know, flop forward, fall down, all that jazz. So I have one out already, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach it to this foam core, right? So they come in these different pieces, and uh, I cut this foam core out to fit inside of this, because if we go directly into the back, these things are gonna flop forward, right? So um, the foam core kind of makes it easier for me to put push pins in. I don't have to nail directly into the backing board. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's go ho hopefully going to help hold these things in place without it kind of turning into a bit of a mess. So um, I'm going to use some fabric here. This is actually uh, the fabric that I used to um, used to be the backdrop for my videos uh, before we got this nice little uh, tablecloth here. And uh, I accidentally strapped this one to the backing board itself, which was a terrible idea. Uh, this is like my 30th attempt, it's <laughs> not 30th, I have like five or six attempts at figuring out how to do this right. I think I'm finally onto something here, so I'm going to take this off, I'm going to wrap this uh, cloth around this foam core, then we're going to put all the games in position, we're going to put the frame together and see how it looks. Here we go. Okay, I have reapplied the fabric from the uh, old backing board to this foam core here. Let's flip over and see if it looks okay. Yeah, not, not bad. <laughs> looks uh, relatively flat and shiny and you know vaguely professional now the real test let's see if it'll fit on this there we go now we've got that in place and now we can start to put uh, the actual games on the board sorry I just want to kind of wrap this little fold around here I don't want any any creases coming through that's looking pretty okay Okay, all right. Looks all right. Pull it from the back. There we go. And all right, so what I want to do is I want to do Metroid across the top. So we're going to do the box, the disc, and the manual. And then we'll do Kid Icarus along the bottom uh, just to kind of match. And now we just want to kind of line all this stuff up exactly where we want it to be. Um, that looks pretty okay. I want to make sure that we're Lining them up on the top and the bottom. It's a mistake that I made in one of my uh, previous attempts at this is, uh, you know, making sure everything lines up on the, you know, the, the, the left to right and then uh, they were all shifted up towards the top and it looks terrible. So we want to make sure we avoid doing that. Get everything exactly where you want it to be ahead of time. Now, uh, what we're going to use to hold these in place that is the question. So um, we could use these thumbtacks here, uh, and they would probably be the easiest route to just kind of thumbtack these things in place. Um, but these thumbtacks are very obvious. Um, 
And I don't love them, I don't love the, uh, it being super obvious what's holding them in place. So I was thinking I might use some nails. I cut these nails into small bits. Uh, the nails are obviously too long to fit inside the glass. So what I wound up doing was I uh, used bolt cutters to cut nails into thirds, uh, which was a huge pain in the butt, but uh, I, I did it. So uh, I guess I could check and see if these are going to work. Okay, moment of truth time. I uh, had to pull a couple of audibles there. I'm trying with these guys, because the nails, they weren't sticking. So we went with the thumbtacks. I think everything's pretty well lined up here. Uh, I wasn't able to get the thumbtacks over this, so I just kind of put them underneath these cases. Everything else I was able to kind of hold in place. So I'm gonna put the glass on now, and we're gonna try and close, close it up and see if this actually works. All right, moment of truth time. I'm gonna stand it up and see what happens. Oh, it works! Oh, it looks great! Oh, hooray! There you go. We did it. We made uh, we made these discs and instruction manuals hang up and look real nice in this frame. And now I'm just gonna put it up on the wall. I got a, uh, another couple of disc system games to, to frame up and then we're gonna hang them over my TV and, and that'll be that. So there you go. This was a, a fun, interesting project uh, and a cool way to display uh, some historically significant classic games. Ta-da. All right, there you have it. That's uh, it came out very nicely. I did another one right after I finished the one that uh, you saw me on video doing and uh, kind of hung them up on the wall uh, over there of my television. They look really nice. Uh, I'm very happy with the way they came out. I do still need to track down an instruction manual for Doki Doki Panic because uh, that's the other one I did. I think uh, the video was of me putting together Metroid and Kid Icarus. The other one has my disc system Doki Doki Panic and Legend of Zelda in it, which is Really super cool, I just need that last instruction manual to fill the extra space. But regardless, uh, the ones that I have, there I keep looking over there like you can see it. That's where the wall is that I hung these things up on. Uh, I think it looks really great and it's a really cool way of displaying something that has that level of historical significance. And they're pretty easy to open up if I ever need to look through those manuals again. Um, to just kind of like page through them because they've got such great artwork in them. But seeing them out and on display, seeing the discs themselves out and on display, seeing this, I don't even have a functioning disc system. I just have them for the historical significance. Like this is a really great way to display them. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. So that's it, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw here today, please follow, comment, like, subscribe, share, and let us know down in the comments. What do you think of what I did? What better way was there to do that? Because I am sure that there is a smarter way to go about doing this than what I did. Um, I made a lot of mistakes during this process, but you know, it was a learning process and I'm really happy with the final results, but I would love to hear from anybody who wants to chime in on really cool and interesting ways to display the games from their past or things of historical significance uh, in, in ways that really make their homes look nice. So thanks again, everyone. On behalf of all of us here at Stone Age Gamer, keep playing games.